So I just want to go over a few things and of course for our folks that have been doing this for a while it's always good to go over the basics. Diets don't work. They just don't. Counting calories never worked. So I want you to lose that mindset and what I want you to know is that your weight and your health is just your chemical reaction to food. And when you find the foods that work for you, you are going to feel your best and the pounds are going to fly off. In fact, the average weight loss in a month is about 9% of your body weight. And you are eating till you're full every day, and I'm gonna make you exercise a lot less too. Wine, cheese, and chocolate, part of the diet. This is a lifestyle. This is the way for you to live. This is the way to free yourself from f feeling like you have, you have to cut back. You have to deny yourself. You can't eat fun things. That's not what this is about at all. But I don't want you to eat foods that make you sick. And in fact, that's what some healthy foods can do. And that's the irony. As one woman said to me, Lynn, it's the strawberries that are making me fat and not the cheesecake. So what I started to do is I started to track people's individual responses to food. And I started to notice certain patterns. I started to notice that 85% of the people I was working with were gaining weight and a lot of weight in reaction to healthy foods like salmon, black beans, yogurt, oatmeal, strawberries. It wasn't making sense, but I couldn't deny what I was seeing. So by the time I'd worked around with around a few hundred people, I actually came up with a template, and that's the reactive food list that you know. 85% of the people aren't going to do well with Greek yogurt, 70% with green beans, 60% with red peppers, right? So you're denying yourself foods, you're plugging these foods in on a daily basis, thinking that you're doing the right thing, and you're beating yourself up, wondering why your body isn't responding. The plan will help you understand why. It's a systematic protocol that's going to guide you days one through 20, testing you on the foods you eat. What I want you to do is understand your chemical response to food. And once again, when you understand that your weight is just your chemical reaction to foods, you will never have to diet again. So I don't want you to think that there's something wrong with you and your magic pill has stopped working, we're just gonna give you a tool that you can use for the rest of your life. So here's the basic premise on how foods cause inflammation and how digestion slowing down can make us sick and overweight. The first thing that happens is when you eat a food that doesn't work for your chemistry, and let's say it's asparagus, because remember, asparagus is 85% reactive. So when you eat that asparagus, the first thing that happens is you have a histamine response. And what that means is that you have short-term water weight gain. You might also have a stuffy nose. You might notice uh, some allergic skin reactions. But you're definitely going to notice the next day when you step on that scale that you are up in weight. And you can gain up to three to four pounds in reaction to a food that doesn't work for you. Now, you're a smart person, right? It's just water weight. You can just work out the next day and that water weight should be gone. How does it stay on as actual weight and how does it affect your health? And this is where it gets interesting. When you have heightened levels of histamine, the next thing that happens is your cortisol levels shoot through the roof. And heightened levels of cortisol enact long-term fat storage. So now that asparagus, which caused short-term water weight gain, is staying on is actual weight. But the fun doesn't stop there. Because when we have heightened levels of cortisol, the next thing that happens is it starts to screw around with our hormones. So in men, it's going to usually shunt testosterone production. And in women, usually progesterone production. Now, we have our hormones flow all over the place. Great, so now we're moody and poochy and probably craving a lot of carbs. But these hormonal fluctuations do a couple of things. And the main ones that we're going to address is one, it attacks thyroid function. 
and your thyroid is your master gland for your metabolism. Two, it's going to kick up yeast. And yeast is going to start to affect our microbiome, our gut. Now, 70% of your immune system is in your gut. The majority of your serotonin production, your feel-good hormone, is in your gut. Is it any wonder why you're plugging in that asparagus and you're gaining weight, you're hormonal as heck, you're stressed out, and your immune system is eroding, and you're feeling really, really moody? It's the asparagus. It's not the fried calamari. By the way, fried calamari happens to be lower reactive, so just keep that in mind when you're testing. Okay, so identifying these healthy foods that you're plugging in on a day-to-day -day basis, that's the issue. You're not expecting to lose weight from margaritas and nachos. So I'm not going to say don't have the margaritas and nachos. The issues may be the egg white omelet. The issue may be the Greek yogurt. The issue is that you're listening to people. You're listening to health experts trying to do the healthiest thing. And your weight and your health isn't responding. And you're beating yourself up thinking there's something that's wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with you. What I want you to know is you gaining weight is your body saying, please don't feed this food to me. And if we can just step away from that minor annoyance, from that number on the scale, there could be nothing more awesome than your body giving you these signs every single day. Don't feed this to me. It could be bloating after a meal. It could be a headache. It could be joint pain. It could be depression. But it's always going to show up on the scale. And the plan is going to teach you every single day how to determine what works for you.